In this video, we're going to talk about finding the nth roots of a complex number. So to prepare you for that, let me just give you an analogy problem, or an easier problem, that will help you follow along. So first, let's pretend that instead, I asked you to find the square roots of 9. So finding the square roots of 9, how do I do that? Well, another way to view that is finding the square roots of 9 is the same as solving this equation. This means the same thing as this. And so how do I solve x squared equals 9? Well, we know you can take the square root. But one thing you should also know is taking the square root is the same as raising both sides to the one half. And this is going to be more important. Viewing it this way is going to be more important. But either way you view it, we know that the answers are 3 and negative 3. One thing you never probably never thought to do was to graph these answers in the complex plane. So let's see what we do what we get when we do that. Here's the real number line and here's the imaginary number line. 3 is right here and negative 3 is right here. So I have two answers. Now one thing you probably never thought of was that they are actually evenly spaced apart 180 degrees. So, why am I drawing this to your attention? Because it's going to help us solve our problem above here, which is to find the fourth roots of z equals 2 cosine pi plus i sine pi. Now I'm going to use some abbreviations here. Right? Another way to write that just in an abbreviated form is 2 cis cosine i sine theta, <clears throat> where theta is pi. But let's go to degrees for this problem. So we're going to, we're going to try to solve that problem. So, this problem above, we can rewrite that as solve z to the fourth equals 2 cis, 180 degrees. Why do I use z instead of x? Well, z is just an off, often used for complex numbers, that's all. No, no other reason. <clears throat> so, just like over here, I solve this by raising both sides to the one-half. I'm going to solve this by raising both sides to the one-fourth. Now, this is really convenient because... When I raise z to the 4th to the 1 4th, I just get z. Right. And when I raise a complex number in trig form to a power, we know that that means to raise the r value to that power and to multiply my angle times that power. And so what we get is the fourth root, right, because that's what this means. Z to the one-fourth means the fourth root, just like uh, x to the one-half means the square root. And then I multiply my angle. 180 degrees times the fourth is 180 divided by 4, which is 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Now, 
Just like up here, there were two answers when we solved x squared equals 9. There are going to be four answers to this equation. So I'm going to prepare by labeling z1, 2, 3, and 4. <clears throat> now, how do I find the, other, find the other ones? It seems like the job is done. Well, let's just graph quickly the answers we do have. We have we have 4 root of 2 is our r, and 45 degrees is our angle. So that's easy to graph in trig form. I rotate 45 degrees and walk out 4 root of 2. And that brings me to an, an, an angle right here or a number right here, sorry. There is our our first answer. I'm just gonna like dash in a, a line there. How do I find the others? Well I make use of the fact that my answers are always evenly spaced. So see how my answers are evenly spaced here? Right? The 3 and the negative 3 are 180 degrees apart. Now notice 180 degrees is just 360 divided by 2. So to find out how my answers in this problem are evenly spaced, I do 360 divided by 4 because I was taking the fourth root, or I was finding fourth roots, and that equals 90 degrees. So that's what I add. <clears throat> what about my r? Well, my r, remember, is the distance from the origin and that is, in this case, a 3 in both answers for my x squared equals 3. And so likewise, it's going to be the same for my complex numbers, uh, my answers to my fourth root problem here. So these are all going to be fourth root to 2 for my r. <clears throat> Again, sorry about my voice. I'm getting a little sick here. And now what I do to get my other answers is I'm just going to add 90 degrees because that's how far they're spaced. And if I add 90 degrees, I get 135. And then I'm going to plus 90 degrees again to get 225. And then I'm going to plus 90 degrees again to get 315 degrees. Now if I plus 90 again, which I don't have to, but if I plus 90 again, you'll notice what I get is uh, 405 degrees, but 405 degrees is the same as 45 degrees. They're coterminal. So it doesn't give me any new information. And these are my four answers. We'll leave them in trig form. Okay, here, you don't have to worry about this. This I just simplified it here. One, two, three, four. Those are my four answers, and we're going to leave them in trig form. But just as a final afterthought, notice that they're going to be, or when you graph them, they are going to be evenly spaced. So root, two, uh, root 4, 2, uh, CIS, to abbreviate 135 degrees, puts me here. And Z3 would be here. And then Z4 would be here. So they're all evenly spaced.